Ashraf Ghani. I, I'm, see, I'm not making any adverse comment on Ashraf Ghani. These are just, you know, studies in leadership. Ashraf Ghani had ticked all the right boxes. He was a renowned academic, economist, been to the best of American universities, Columbia, World Bank, finance minister, vice chancellor of the Kabul University. But when Zelensky was offered the ride out, instinctively he refused the ride and said, I want 1,500 helmets. And those helmets became uh, javelins and they became the leopards and they became the challengers. Now they are fighter jets. But he refused the ride out. Ashraf Ghani took the ride out. He took the ride out. And so in that critical moment of your destiny in leadership, one peaked and one simply disappeared into oblivion. So this is what, you know, a leadership can, can be. So it's not always exclusively a personal endeavor, often the product of the times. Sometimes the moment finds the man and sometimes the man seizes the moment. So it's all of these things coming together. But one thing is certain that all these events, you will see that they rhyme with history. There is a sense of timing. And so another, you know, thing in leadership is that we must study history more seriously. In India, we just don't do it. There is a famous historian, Neil Ferguson, he's a British historian. Those of you um, who read him will know what I'm saying. Those of you who don't, I strongly urge that you read him. He has used history with mathematical precision. He predicted the pandemic and well ahead of the time it happened. He predicted the Ukraine conflict. He was the lone voice who was arguing that it would occur. When everybody was telling you that, nee, nee, shayad, ifs, buts, as a result of which, he has put together this leading think tank called Fremantle, which leading governments pay for by billions of dollars just to get that advice. So this is what, you know, history, your deep understanding of it, your fruitful use of it can do. So it's not only a domain in leadership, but a money spinning venture. So this is what, you know, history can do. In our case, history somehow is uh, the way, for example, I was taught history, it's comical. I remember why one took a dislike to history because we were told, okay, you get up, please read para 3, you get up, please read para 4, you read para 11, sit down, now take a break. And then in the exam you would get all kinds of dates which made no sense, 1525, 1646. So it became a rote exercise. And many of these good historians, how they teach you history is by telling you, see how in the Industrial Revolution, the feminist movement got a fillip. So these diverse uh, aspects of history. So India seriously lacks, uh, you know, good historians. But the point, you know, really about the Zelensky Ashraf is this, that it is not the size of the dog in the fight, but the fight in the dog that matters. I would posit it as wisdom or vivek, a very sophisticated ability to discriminate. It is astuteness. It does not necessarily come from schooling. Kamraj, Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, President of the Indian National Congress, didn't go to school. He had no formal education. So it does necessarily not come from school. In fact, in my view, this is a mature audience. Uh, I think Mark Twain said when he was asked that why did he, why was he reasonably successful in life? He said, I took great care never to let my schooling interfere with my education. That is also my conclusion. Those school years are, I mean, with due respect to all my teachers, pretty wasteful. The education starts later. And of course, if there is that right mix of schooling and education, it flows into wisdom. And then you become this astute leader.